In spite of being on contraception, Pasha the lioness found herself unexpectedly expecting. However, the most astonishing revelation that left everyone in disbelief was yet to come. Exhausted and weakened, Pasha had just given birth to two beautiful cubs after enduring a lengthy and challenging labor process. The staff at the Lion and Cheetah Park near Harare, Zimbabwe, were overjoyed, witnessing the difficult birth with held breath. At certain points, they even feared for the lioness's survival. As Pasha cleaned her cubs, the park workers couldn't help but marvel at the incredible feat she had accomplished. Having observed the birthing process firsthand, they understood that delivering cubs was deemed impossible for Pasha. Yet, her challenges were far from over. Despite their excitement about the new additions to the pride, the vet prescribed a contraceptive pill to control Pasha's breeding. It's a common practice in wildlife sanctuaries to administer contraceptive methods for managing animal populations, and this wasn't the first time such a measure had been employed. After all, Pasha's previous pregnancy and birthing had nearly cost her life, and they aimed to ensure her well-being and prevent further strain on her health. After the contraceptive pill was administered, everything seemed to return to normal. Pasha the lioness proudly introduced her two cubs to the pride, and the others warmly welcomed them. Over time, her cubs thrived and grew into magnificent young lions. Pasha appeared to have maintained her position within the pride and interacted with other males without apparent consequences. It appeared to be a success story, and everyone believed they had resolved her breeding issues. However, beneath the surface, an unforeseen storm was brewing. Just a few months after the contraceptive pill had been given, the vet and park staff gathered around Pasha once again. This time, their faces displayed shock and disbelief. An unimaginable event had transpired, Pasha was pregnant once more, despite being on birth control. The astonishment and confusion in the air were tangible, leaving everyone puzzled and seeking answers. The news sent waves of curiosity and concern throughout the park. How could Pasha have become pregnant? Despite the implemented contraceptive measures, this unexpected twist left staff members contemplating the perplexing enigma. In a desperate quest for explanations and solutions, they confirmed Pasha's unexpected pregnancy through comprehensive examinations and tests conducted by the veterinarian, leaving no doubt about the lioness's condition, she was carrying a new litter of cubs. Perplexed by this puzzling situation, the park staff sought assistance from reproductive experts and wildlife contraception specialists. Despite thorough analysis and consultations, no one could comprehend what had caused the contraceptive pill to fail, leaving many questions unanswered. With no other option, the workers dedicated themselves to caring for the pregnant lioness as her due date approached. Their utmost priority was ensuring Pasha's well-being and the safety of her upcoming litter. Diligently, they kept a watchful eye on her health, ever vigilant for any changes or signs of distress. By providing her with a balanced and nutritious diet, they aimed to support her during this crucial time. As the days passed, anticipation grew among the workers, who assembled a dedicated team on standby, prepared to assist Pasha whenever necessary. Despite the shock and confusion, their focus shifted to providing the best possible care for Pasha and her soon-to-arrive cubs. They remained hopeful and ready to handle whatever challenges these unexpected events might bring. The long-awaited day finally arrived, and the expectant mother, Pasha, went into labor. The workers observed with a mix of excitement and apprehension as she displayed instinctual behaviors signaling the imminent arrival of her cubs. As hours passed, the workers' anxiety heightened, keeping a close eye on her progress and prepared to intervene if necessary. At last, the first cub was born, a tiny and precious addition to the pride. Witnessing the miracle of life unfolding before their eyes, the workers collectively sighed with relief. However, the surprises didn't end there, another cub emerged, and then yet another, until Pasha gave birth to eight cubs. This extraordinary feat defied all expectations and set a world record, leaving everyone in disbelief. Pasha's incredible story of giving birth to eight cubs in a single litter, despite being on a contraceptive pill, spread like wildfire through the wildlife community, shocking experts and enthusiasts alike. 
It was unprecedented, capturing the hearts of people worldwide. As they marveled at the strength and resilience of this remarkable lioness, Hilary Matsikanda, the head of scientific services for Zimbabwe's Park Authority, confirmed the extraordinary occurrence of Pasha's birth. Rightfully labeling it as a world record in the history of lions worldwide, such a large litter had never been documented before. Traditionally, lionesses give birth to two cubs per litter, with four considered exceptionally lucky. Yet, against all odds and despite her rough birthing history, Pasha shattered these norms, showcasing that nature can defy even the most established expectations. The decision to put Pasha on a contraceptive pill to manage her breeding had been made with good intentions, but fate had other plans. News of Pasha's exceptional feat resonated far beyond Zimbabwe's borders, surpassing the previous national record set in China, where a lioness in a zoo had given birth to six cubs. Pasha's unprecedented achievement captured the attention and admiration of people worldwide. However, amidst the excitement, the well-being of Pasha and her cubs took center stage. The remarkable lioness was weak after multiple births, requiring close monitoring and specialized care. The zoo's caretakers took every precaution to ensure her recovery and support the health of her cubs. They improved her diet, providing a balanced mix of high-quality meat enriched with essential vitamins and minerals. Frequent daily meals supplied the necessary energy and nutrients to help her regain her strength. Additionally, fresh water was always available to keep her hydrated and maintain her overall well-being during this critical period. The welfare of Pasha and her extraordinary brood remained the top priority for the devoted team at the park, aiming to ensure their thriving future in the wild. As they focused on the well-being of the lioness and her cubs, the staff faced the challenge of separating the tiny cubs from the recovering mother. The park's dedicated team tirelessly supported resorting to bottle feeding the octuplets to ensure nourishment and survival. Three of the eight precious cubs born to Pasha stood out due to their unusually small size and delicate condition. Recognizing the vulnerability of these tiny cubs, the caretakers made the difficult decision to place them in intensive care, where they would receive specialized attention and round-the-clock monitoring. Within the intensive care unit, each cub received personalized care and frequent feedings, ensuring they received the essential nourishment needed for their tiny bodies to grow and develop. Out of the three cubs in intensive care, one proved to be the most concerning. Despite all the care and efforts, it struggled to improve and remained smaller and weaker than the rest. At times, the caretakers could barely tell if it was still alive. While the other two cubs began to show signs of improvement, this last one's condition worsened. The caretakers were on the brink of losing hope when the cub's health suddenly took a drastic turn for the better. Miraculously, it was around the same time that Pasha regained her strength, further adding to the sense of awe and wonder at this extraordinary journey of survival. The caretaker's perseverance and devotion paid off as both Pasha and her tiny cub defied the odds, inspiring admiration and respect among everyone at the park. This experience further solidified the deep bond between the dedicated staff and the remarkable lioness and her cubs, fostering a profound sense of responsibility to ensure their continued health and happiness. The bond between Mother Pasha and her tiny cub was so profound that it seemed they recovered together. This heartwarming connection was the beginning of good things for this extraordinary family. While Pasha and her three tiny cubs received intensive care, the remaining lions in the pride were not neglected. The dedicated staff prioritized closely observing and attending to their needs within a separate enclosure, ensuring their well-being and development. Recognizing the importance of maternal care and nourishment for the cubs, the staff took on the role of surrogate mothers. They understood the significance of replicating the natural feeding process and diligently suckled the cubs from bottles. Each time they woke up from sleep. This nurturing act aimed to provide the tiny cubs with vital nutrition for their growth and thriving. The staff's dedication didn't stop there, they comprehended that the cubs still required a significant amount of milk and warmth to support their ongoing development. They followed a strict feeding schedule with great care and attention, ensuring the cubs received adequate formula milk at regular intervals. 
With a meticulous approach, the caretakers ensured that the cubs' nutritional needs were comprehensively addressed, enabling them to gain the necessary strength and energy for their flourishing. Amidst constant care and devotion, the entire park witnessed a unique and heartening spectacle as the staff formed a close bond with the cubs, serving as their surrogate family. This unforeseen turn of events strengthened the connection between the workers and the pride, transforming the park into a loving and nurturing home for all its inhabitants. Together, they embarked on a journey of growth and recovery, treasuring the precious moments of unity and survival that united them as an extraordinary family. The heartening image of these caretakers tenderly nurturing Pasha's extraordinary offspring became a powerful testament to the unbreakable bond between humans and animals. Their steadfast dedication to the well-being of these cubs underscored the tremendous responsibility entrusted to those caring for the park's inhabitants. The park's management meticulously considered when to share the news with the public, aiming to be fully prepared for the inevitable influx of attention. When Pasha's story was finally shared, it captivated the imagination of both scientists and the general public, serving as a poignant reminder that nature is an endless source of surprises that can surpass our understanding. The news of Pasha's world record-breaking litter spread rapidly, transforming the Lion and Cheetah Park into a center of excitement and curiosity. Enthusiastic visitors observed the extraordinary lioness and her remarkable cubs, eager to capture the moment with their cameras. Whispers of astonishment echoed through the air as visitors exchanged tales of this unforgettable sight. Departing from the Lion and Cheetah Park, visitors carried cherished memories of this extraordinary experience and a newfound appreciation for the magnificence of nature. Pasha's story stirred inspiration in all who heard it, leaving a lasting impact on everyone who witnessed this rare and beautiful exhibition of life's wonders. The enduring connection between the park's caretakers and the pride of lions illustrated the profound depth of the human-animal bond and the shared responsibility to protect and care for the precious wildlife that enriches our world. What are your thoughts on this remarkable story? Share your comments below. Until next time, goodbye. Let's continue. The fox caught a hare alive, and when he was about to have a delicious meal, he was watched by a sharp-eyed eagle. The eagle snatched the hare and was about to fly away. However, the red fox and the eagle are about to stage a battle in the air. Nature has its own law of survival, the law of the jungle survives of the fittest. Except for seeing lions and tigers chasing the same prey together in animal world, fighting for your own life, it is difficult to see the fighting between animals. San Juan Island National Park in Washington State, USA, is home to many wild animals, including red foxes and rabbits, but also mule deer, wild turkeys and raccoons. Birds also frequent here. Of course, it not only attracts all kinds of wild animals, but also attracts many animal lovers, including Kevin Ebby, who lives more than 30 kilometers away from San Juan Island National Park in a small town. He is a professional photographer. Kevin has been very interested in nature and animals since he was a child. He has known a lot of animals since he was very young. When Kevin was in school, the teacher often asked him to introduce different animals to his classmates. Amid the surprise and admiration, little Kevin was greatly satisfied. He dreamed of becoming a biologist when he grew up. However, due to some reasons, Kevin did not realize his dream, but in order to continue to contact animals, he decided to become a videographer. In his spare time, he always goes to the park to shoot all kinds of animals. Under his lens, countless animals show their charming charm. Kevin truly interprets the beauty of nature. In order to make more people fall in love with nature, Kevin registered a social account and uploaded all the photos of animals he took, which earned him the attention of many netizens. In order to take more precious photos, Kevin traveled to many national parks and nature reserves. One day, he drove to San Juan Island National Park. What he didn't expect was that he was about to record a magical scene. Kevin was walking in the park when he noticed a few animals not far away. He took a few steps forward and saw clearly that it was the red fox. They seemed to be looking for food. Since he has never photographed a fox hunting before, Kevin decided not to let go of this rare opportunity. He walked to the side of the open space and sat down, 
holding up the camera and quietly waiting for the foxes. Next move. As Kevin expected, the red foxes started hunting. They seemed to be wandering around, but they were actually carefully observing everything around them. Soon, a hare was targeted by red foxes. Generally speaking, red foxes mainly feed on berries, insects and voles, and they are rarely seen catching hares. This rare scene made Kevin on the side very excited, and even his hands holding the camera trembled slightly. In an instant, the red fox launched an attack on the hare, and the result can be imagined. Before the hare started to escape, it was caught. In front of the cunning red fox, the hare has no advantage at all in terms of intelligence or combat effectiveness. However, just when the red fox was proudly holding the rabbit in its mouth, and was about to find a place to have a happy meal, suddenly, the red fox stopped, frightened and froze in place, which made Kevin, who was concentrating on shooting, very puzzled. He didn't understand what happened, but when Kevin looked aside, he understood everything instantly. As the saying goes, the mantis catches the cicada and the oriole is behind. It turned out that at this time, a bald eagle flew from a distance. Seeing the red fox pounced, the sharp left claw wanted to snatch the hare from the red fox's mouth. Although eagles are very good at catching small animals on the ground, they have another characteristic, that is, if there is ready-made prey, they will not spend a lot of time hunting by themselves, just grab it. The red fox was going to run away, but the speed of the bald eagle was too fast. Before the red fox could think of a way to escape, the bald eagle grabbed the rabbit. I thought the red fox would be frightened and drop the food in its mouth and run away. Unexpectedly, it bit the rabbit and refused to let go. It's so easy to hand over to others. The bald eagle also grabs its prey and does not let go. Although the red fox is no match for the bald eagle at all, the little red fox still wants to fight hard. Kevin found that the strong bald eagle is about to take the little red fox into the air. In the next second, the red fox and the rabbit were caught by the bald eagle and flew into the air. The red fox twisted its body in mid-air, shaking back and forth, trying to make the bald eagle let go of its claws. Unexpectedly, this bald eagle can lift such an astonishing weight. Even though the red fox's limbs danced wildly in mid-air, it still spread its wings and kept hanging in the air to fight against the red fox. It seems that this rabbit is bound to win. The bald eagle was also trying to throw the red fox down, and finally it moved the rabbit to its right paw, trying to shake off the fox's entanglement with its left paw. In mid-air, the fox naturally lost the wind. It struggled for a long time, but couldn't get back its prey. In order to save its own life, the red fox had no choice but to give up resistance. The witty red fox finally gave up on the hare, let go of its mouth and fell on the grass. It roared angrily at the bald eagle in the sky, extremely unwilling, but it could only watch it fly away. Kevin documented the whole process and it was fantastic. He couldn't believe his eyes. Looking at the sad-faced fox in the distance, who would have thought that such ups and downs are only eight seconds apart. Kevin slowly approached the red fox, perhaps because he had just experienced frustration. The red fox did not attack the approaching humans. Kevin raised the camera and took a close-up shot of the red fox's melancholy little face, the red fox seemed to be attracted by the black thing in the hands of the human beings. It took a closer look, and after confirming that it was not food, it ran away pitifully. Kevin uploaded the photos he took this time to his personal social platform. Once released, he attracted many netizens from different countries. Many people fell in love with the cute little red fox, and some even accused the bald eagle of stealing others' food. Kevin did not expect that the photos he accidentally took would be loved by so many netizens. This not only made him feel that he had a wonderful communication with the animals, but also made him more convinced of his choice. Until now, Kevin has been insisting on photographing wild animals. Perhaps for him, this is the happiest thing in his life. Let's continue. What happened? If it's your first time here and you want to learn new facts, it will definitely make you smarter and more informed. 
make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you never miss a thing. The snake attacked the baby, but what the fox did was startling. Although Alexei completed his university studies with a degree in accounting, he decided to return to the village of his birth. He restored the wooden house left by his father who died many years ago, and started farming and raising livestock. The man had inherited some agricultural equipment from his father, and he also found the tractor left intact by his father. So he goes around the village and works the land. He also pulls a trailer when he needs to transport goods and the crops he harvests from the land. Alexei is an energetic, hard-working guy who goes to bed early when he gets home. On his days off, he takes his wife and children for a walk in the city near the village. They go to the movie theater, they go to the water park, and they come home at the end of the day. Over time, Alexei's children all married and lived in the city, while he and his wife stayed in the small village. Everyone envies that a man has such a beautiful wife, who still maintains an elegant demeanor in her fifties. Alexei loved his wife Marina very much and was always eager to return home. The couple have been together for thirty years and they have never had an argument or been angry. They are both calm and very much in love. Alexei and Marina's sons visit them every holiday, taking his wife and older son with him, while he leaves his younger son in the nursery. Grandfather loves his grandson very much. The boy is bright and enjoys walking with his grandfather in the forest and helping him as he feeds the livestock and tills the land. That's why Alexei was so happy when he learned that his grandson was coming to visit him. During the summer vacation, Alexei's son, wife and son came. He stayed at home for a week, then he and his wife left because they had work to do, and they left little Nikita to his grandfather and grandmother. The grandfather refused to take his grandson to the field he was working with a tractor because of the high temperature, which could hurt him. He left him and Marina at home, and when he came back at night, he bought sweets or presents and they sat at home and played together. Although the grandfather is tired from work, he will sometimes agree to his grandson's request and take him for a trip in the woods near his home. There, they wandered among the woods, enjoying the beautiful nature and listening to the birdsong echoing in the forest. One day, Alexei was plowing with a tractor when he was startled by a little fox lying in front of the tractor. Fortunately, he didn't run over him, so he immediately stopped the car and got out of the car to check the little fox's situation. He noticed that the fox was in a miserable condition and was very hungry because of the loss of his mother, he had no food to eat. Alexei didn't bring food, so he took the little fox in his arms, took the poor animal to his house, put it in the garage, brought food and water, and left it there without telling his wife and grandson and went back to work. In the evening, the man came to check on the little fox, and found that the little fox had eaten all the food, drank all the water, and was lying on the spot. Alexei wanted to give the little fox as a gift to his grandson, but he was afraid that the fierce animal would hurt Nikita, so he decided to test his behavior to see if he was peaceful or aggressive. After two days, Alexei noticed that the little animal was very calm. As soon as the man opens the garage door, it dances happily and interacts with the man. That's why the grandfather brought the little fox to his grandson to take care of him, and advised his grandson to treat it kindly. Marina was terrified of the fox at first and kept watching her grandson, but over time she found the animal kind and calm, so she started loving him, approaching him and petting him. Little Fox still lives at Alexei's house, and everyone in the family has grown attached and loved him. The man had planned to release the critter back into the forest once it regained its strength and mobility, but he didn't for two reasons. The first is that foxes are very small and cannot hunt. Instead, he may have fallen prey to a predator, also because he noticed that his grandson was so fascinated by foxes that he didn't separate from him. He became his best friend and spent most of his time playing in the yard with him. Alexei was very pleased to see his grandson happy, so he had to keep the fox until the end of the summer vacation and Nikita left. As the weeks passed, the fox started to get bigger and started wandering around the house. The lively fox used to catch mice and eat them, so he doesn't need much food anymore. He became a hunter. Nikita was watching the fox hunt and it was fun to watch him hunt the mice.
because he had never seen an animal hunting its prey. When the time for Nikita's departure approached, the latter asked his grandfather for permission to take the fox. But Alexei refused and told him that the animal had a family waiting for him so he had to go back, then told him that he could come every holiday because the fox would not go away and would stay in the nearby woods inside. When Nikita got into the car, the fox followed the car until the car drove away. Everyone was moved by that scene. Alexei and Marina continued to take care of the little fox until he went to the forest and stayed there for a long time. The animal came to visit them at first, but over time, it stopped coming because it may have bred. About a year later, Nikita took his father and younger brother Sasha back to the village to visit his grandfather. The boy immediately started looking around the house for his friend the fox. When his grandfather approached him and told him that the animal was gone, he went to the forest and started living there with his friends. The little boy sighed and begged his grandpa to take him to visit his friend the fox because he missed him so much. The grandfather took his grandson around looking for the fox, but they couldn't find him. Then Alexei made his grandson forget about him because he was no longer there. Nikita no longer remembers the fox and realizes that the animal lives in his world with his family and friends. Alexei is fixing the ceiling while Marina prepares food in the kitchen while watching her grandchildren play in the yard. Moments later, the grandmother heard her eldest grandson screaming. She looked out the window and saw a large poisonous snake approaching her grandson. She ran out to get the snake away from Nikita, but the snake attacked her and forced her to turn back. The woman then ran to her husband for help. When Marina told her husband what had happened to their grandson, Alexei came down from the roof with a hammer in his hand and ran with his wife to save his grandson. There he found the little boy playing with the fox that lived in his house, while the snake was lying dead on the ground. The couple approached their grandson to check on him and found him to be doing well. The fox intervened at the last moment, stopping the snake from biting him and killing it instantly, before he hugged him and kept watching as the brave animal that saved their grandson's life blocked his way. The fox played with Nikita and his brother for about an hour, then left and disappeared into the forest, never to return. As for Alexei and Marina, they became keen to watch over their grandchildren and keep them from playing in the thick grass. Although they realize that someone is protecting them, they are willing to risk their lives for the family. Because they saved the fox's life and took care of him until he grew up and became stronger. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video on social networks. We will get, but the man is unharmed. Why didn't the lion attack him? What happened between them? Four years ago in the winter, Eduardo encountered a lion full of scars in the wild. Its fur was a mess and it looked like it had been roaming for a long time. Its body was thin and bony, and you could tell it had been tortured. When Eduardo saw the poor lion, he decided without hesitation to bring it to the camp where he worked. It is a non-profit animal rescue organization that has rescued more than 650 animals of different species since 2015. There, they can take better care of the lion. Eduardo named the lion, whose health was in terrible shape when Harry first arrived at the rescue center. Prolonged starvation led to severe malnutrition, and some wounds on its body showed that it was always at a disadvantage in the fight with other animals. Eduardo believes that for a lion who has experienced such a difficult life, coming to a rescue center may be a good choice, at least there will be a safe haven that can protect it from greater dangers. Eduardo tried his best to take care of the lion and gave him medicine on time, hoping that it would recover as soon as possible. They became very good friends and were inseparable. Every day, all the staff at the rescue center know that they are best friends. It didn't take Jerry long to get back to more or less good shape again, but Eduardo left the rescue group for personal reasons, which meant Harvey couldn't see his savior and best friend Eduardo. Eduardo was away for four years and after four years he returned to the rescue center and set foot on this familiar area again, a place where he used to spend time with animals. Many memories came to his mind. The only one he would never forget was the lion. Jerry. The staff guided Eduardo to the lion park, where he saw Yari from a distance, getting ready to play behind a small door. 
Eduardo could not hide his excitement and shouted out the name of his old friend. No one expected that Yari would immediately recognize Eduardo, and after so many years, he rushed out of the door like a whirlwind and went straight into Eduardo's arms. Since meeting Eduardo, Yari has not stopped for a moment, running and jumping on the lawn, showing off his happiness. But when Eduardo called its name, it stumbled deliberately, and it was as cute as a big cat. Finally, Jerry rushed to Eduardo, enjoying the intimate moment with him, resting his head on Eduardo's arm and expressing how much he had been missed for four years. It even rolled on the ground and acted like a spoiled child. Eduardo kept stroking it and hugging it, and the reunion between the two friends was truly touching. Eduardo said that at first many people told him that the lion was a ferocious animal and would not live a normal life, let alone a life in a rescue center, but now Yari is strong and healthy and living the life of a lion in Mexico. Normal life. It's hard to believe that four years ago, Gary was a gaunt and lifeless lion. Eduardo believes it comes down to making the right decisions. While most people think of lions as dangerous animals, their bond shows that animals and humans can develop loving and respectful relationships that can last for a long time. We all know that lions are one of the most beautiful animals in the animal kingdom. These ferocious cats are strong, fast and agile, but also dangerous. Lions are social animals, and becoming the leader of the group requires the approval of all lions and is occasionally challenged by other young and stronger lions. The woman named Chiara has become the leader of the four lions. The following short story will tell us. In South Africa, a lioness and four cubs died in a ferocious animal attack, leaving four cubs unable to hunt and support themselves. A woman named Chiara adopted the lions so they could survive. Chiara works at a carnivore sanctuary in South Africa caring for big cats and has experience caring for lions and tigers. She brought the four lions to the reserve. Chiara knew it was not easy to get along with lions, which are wild animals that are difficult to tame. But fortunately, the four little lions are still very young, and she has enough time to win their trust. So Chiara became the first person to care for the four lions. She spent 17 months with them, taking care of everything and giving them warmth and care. Chiara went into the enclosure alone to play with them, but the lions never had worries or doubts. Chiara developed a deep bond of trust with the four lions, and soon Chiara became a motherly figure to them. Chiara also acts as their true mother, gradually penetrating into their hearts. At first, the lions were skeptical of her, but now they trust Chiara completely. She put in a lot of effort and she totally looks like one of those lions ever since. Now, the lions have complete trust in Chiara, viewing her as their mother and leader. Not only do they snuggle up to her regularly, but they treat her with kisses, hugs, and other expressions of love. The lions quickly calmed down whenever she was near them. Chiara was also deeply moved by her time with the lions. Although they viewed her as their leader, she always cared for the four lions as if they were her own children, building a deep sense of trust. This feeling of trust is mutual. Chiara often sleeps peacefully among the lions, who express their love and trust to her in various ways, like a family. Chiara was grateful that she had saved these four animals. She gained one of the most important emotions in her life, a pure emotion. They are closely connected by an invisible bond. Lions are very affectionate animals, and although they look huge and are considered one of the most dangerous animals in the wild, as mammals they also have dedicated feelings. They never hide their inner joy, nor their love for humans. Carrie, the lion, had not forgotten Salvador, and even after four years, he was still full of gratitude when he saw him again, running around and jumping around, showing his desire for him. Since feeding these lions when they were young, they have transformed their affection for Chiara into respect and trust, and have even come to view the people who care for them as leaders. They regard every act of kindness as a form of faith and express their love for humans without hesitation. Faced with such sincere emotions from animals, humans should cherish their relationships with them even more. These touching stories tell us more about the spiritual aspects of animals. Thanks for watching the video, if you like it, 
please don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me what you think of this story and leave a comment. See you later. Let's continue. When people visited this open zoo, they didn't expect a lion to do so. Lions have a dignified appearance and powerful roars. They are often considered the kings of the jungle. Faced with such a stunning creature, any adventurer will escape. Despite their intimidating reputation, not all lions are as fearsome as they appear. In fact, this lion is like a teddy bear. No one expected it to do this. This lion is one of the big cats living on a safari park in Russia. In 2018, it gave visitors an unforgettable experience. These tourists will never forget it for the rest of their lives. Such a label was initiated by the famous animal trainer in the zoo. This zoo encourages visitors to interact with animals. Therefore, it provides visitors with an open animal viewing experience. Visitors are arranged to enter the zoo in an open sightseeing bus. Any animal can come to them. One day, a group of tourists entered the zoo in a sightseeing bus. The bus was driven by Oleg. He's not worried about meeting large or very dangerous wild animals at all. While visiting, tourists saw a lion cub lying on the road. The lion, named Philia, took an interest in them as they approached it. This is an open zoo. So there are no safeguards between animals and tourists. Anything could happen. Philia walked to the left side of the bus, which made every tourist stunned. What will happen next? No one knows it. Without any hesitation, the lion jumped in front of bus and gave its tamer a hug. Although such an interaction may turn into a tragic accident, this lion is actually like a cuddly teddy bear and has no interest in attacking the tamer or tourists. In fact, it just wants some hugs. In the video filmed by a tourist, this giant lion jumped into the bus and sat in the seat. Due to its size, two tourists were pushed out of the bus when they tried to get close to it. It doesn't seem to know how big it is and it just regards itself as a dog. After getting into the bus, the lion doesn't want to leave. Oleg pushes it and forces it back to the ground. However, Philia didn't give up. It climbed into the back seat of the bus and showed its kindness to all the tourists. It even licked the lady's face. Oleg said tourists who don't want to get up close with the lion could get out of the bus. However, all tourists didn't want it. They said that they wanted to get the lion out of the bus, but all the tourists had to get out first. Only in this way can the lion get off the bus. Once the lion is gone, visitors can get back on the bus again so the lion won't get back again. Interestingly, Philia isn't the only spoiled animal in the zoo. In an interview with The Mirror, Tatiana Alex, the park's director, said, while driving in the zoo, maybe another huge lioness will jump into your arms. It meows like a cat. I am basically sure that my zoo has turned it into one of the kindest animals. In fact, it enthusiastically jumped on the bus of the safari park to kiss and hug tourists, which made many tourists unable to accept. It's crazy for such a dangerous animal to interact with humans in such a gentle way. Due to their lethality and huge bite force, they can easily break a human arm. Lion speed and their teeth are their best weapons. Despite the dangers, Oleg said tourists were safe staying with him. In fact, this trainer made headlines when he stunned a pack of lions with a slipper. According to news reports, Oleg walked in with a slipper and overwhelmed the roaring lions. Obviously, lions realized who is more powerful. Since the video was posted on YouTube, it has had thousands of views. Some people have expressed their views. One user said, this lion is very familiar with people. It found the driver right away and rubbed its nose against tourists. It's happy and well cared for. Respect it and it will get better. Another one user said, oh, my god. Those people are so happy. The lion did not hurt them and they can hug a lion. I want to hug a lion too. This video isn't the first one about an Russian interacting with these amazing animals. 
In 2016, a photographer took pictures of lions at the zoo. They play with tourists, kiss tourists and even sit quietly for tourists to take pictures. According to the Daily Mail, Zikoff, a conservationist of natural resources, said that he hoped these photos would dispel people's idea of hunting Siberian tigers. With about 50 lions in this safari park, it is the largest lion park in Europe. There are about 1,500 other species of animals, including birds and tigers. In 2019, the court ruled that the walkway of the Zoo Lion Stadium must be closed because they pose a threat to tourists. Lions are wild animals. If there is an accident, the lion is likely to hurt tourists. Not everyone has a positive attitude toward close interactions with animals. Some people think it's not a good idea for animals to get too close to people. In an interview with the BBC, the zoologist talked about this zoo. She said the risks of approaching these wild animals mainly come from two aspects. Firstly, diseases on human may be transmitted to animals when close to wild animals and vice versa. Harmful viruses in animals may hurt humans, and there may even be a pandemic that affects people all over the world. Secondly, during the tour, the safety of tourists is also at risk. Whether it's a tiger, a lion, or another large animal, it's hard to be sure that they won't attack people. This zoo has drawn criticism online. In July, a Facebook column aimed at changing human perception and values of wild animals referred to the zoo in a post titled, Captive Wild Animals and Watchdogs, arguing that they're trampling these majestic beasts' dignity. They are deprived of their animal nature and become like commodities. Some conservationists accused Oleg of quieting animals so they could interact with tourists more tamely and playfully. While some people think so, others have the opposite opinion. They think it's a new type of protectionism. By making people close to these wild animals, people will better understand their plight in the natural environment, such as being killed by poachers. It can improve people's understanding of this species and better protect them. This is an argument with both positive and negative aspects. However, one thing is certain. Those tourists who have close contact with philia will never forget their interaction with it. Let's continue. The lion went crazy when it saw the girl. It took them a few minutes to figure out why. The moment the lion made eye contact with the girl, it kept jumping and looked mad, its owner had no way of controlling it or even knowing what was going on. However, they only knew what had happened when the lion suddenly jumped out of its enclosure and lunged at the woman. Its owner was shocked to learn why the lion had done this. Before we start watching this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Let's keep watching this video. Frank didn't know what to expect that day, and he was nervous about his lion Zara's first interaction with zoo visitors. He kept talking to the tourists so much that he did not notice that a young woman had also entered the cage. At the time, Zara was usually calm and unaffected by the zoo staff, however, it was acting very strangely. It walked with the young woman to the cage and had a change that Frank had never seen before. The lion's behavior changed dramatically and suddenly went crazy, first, it frightened the people who approached the cage, so they all took a few steps back. Then, other lions within a 10-meter radius of Zara become nervous. After seeing Zara's reaction, they understood that it was the woman who had caused it, and the other lions started to move to the side. At that moment, Frank didn't know what had caused the accident. Zara was running around, and Frank thought all he could do was wait until Zara calmed down. However, it was not over. The lion charged at full speed towards a footpath. At that time, a lot of people watched the sudden incident. Moreover, the woman took a few steps forward, as if it was finally time to plan. Frank became reassured when he saw the lion jump over the fence. They kept assuring him that the lion would never get over the fence. Frank was worried not only about the lion, but also about the young woman who seemed to be in danger. By then, everyone else knew that Zara had an eye on the young woman. She was probably the reason why the usually majestic lion was acting like a wild animal. The lion charged at full speed toward the woman. 
Frank still didn't know why and wondered if the lion had ever seen the woman before. He was really scared that the woman was in danger and was worried that Zara might cause her harm. He never thought Zara would hurt anyone. However, after what happened that day, no one knew what the lion would do. To everyone's surprise, Zara didn't attack anyone that day. Zara did manage to get to the young woman and stop by her. Frank thought the incident was going to be over, but he was wrong, and what happened afterwards was perhaps even more shocking. The woman remained calm, and Zara felt hungry and didn't even try to attack the woman. Afterwards, they walked together, which shocked Frank. Before he had time to think about what had just happened, the young woman and Zara had already left. Frank stood in front of the camera, trying to solve the accident, and others could see the lion getting farther and farther away. We could hear screams, and probably the incident was extremely shocking to them at the time. By the time Frank reacted, the lion had disappeared. After realizing what had happened, he knew the best thing to do was to call the police, so he picked up his phone and dialed and began describing the woman's appearance. Fortunately, he remembered the woman's appearance very well. At that point, the police tried to understand the situation, but the officer who got on the phone with Frank wasn't sure if they should treat the case as if Frank's lion had been stolen. Still, that's what Frank wanted them to do. Although the lion had gotten away before it approached the woman, the situation was dangerous. A few minutes later, dozens of tips and many witnesses poured into the police station. After that, a police car drove to the scene. Another team determined the lion's location based on the caller's locating points. By then, Zara was undisturbed and still running around the nearby zoo with the young woman. Eventually they learned that the lion was running toward the other side of town in the direction of the suburbs. The lion seemed to have no doubt where it was going and its ultimate goal. The city was built entirely on a grid, which meant that it was relatively easy to follow the lion's trail. However, the lion eventually left the city. Sightings then dwindled until no one reported the lion's location anymore. The police continued to search, even though they didn't know where they were. The police investigated the area where they were last seen, but the lion seemed to have disappeared. However, with no other leads or witnesses, it was difficult for the officers to determine their next move, so they decided to talk to the people at the racetrack. They guessed that someone knew who the woman was or could help them determine the right direction and get more information about the woman's motives. They had a lot of doubts. Fortunately, Frank and most of the police were still at the zoo because the lion feeding was still going on as planned, which was strange. Frank wanted to close the zoo, but this would lead to some unforeseen consequences. One lion's escape was not enough to cancel all the zoo's activities, even though the lion would soon become a danger. Frank knew he had to do something, even if it would be a big burden. When Frank showed up at the zoo again, he was greeted by a lot of angry people. They had paid a lot of money for tickets to see the lion, and Frank assured many visitors that his lion would be there. That incident caused his reputation to suffer, and it upset Frank. But if he kept his word, he didn't need to worry about that. He just wanted Zara back. Maybe some tourists saw this woman enter the area or knew who she was. When Frank asked, most of the tourists just looked at him in confusion. They saw the woman ride off with Zara and thought it was part of the show. The woman was actually working at the zoo and Frank was making plans. Frank was surprised by the accusations and assured some visitors that it was no joke. At the time, people were angry about the unsecured zoo and wondered why the lion could jump the fence. Frank knew he was in big trouble, but he knew he was there to get information, not to justify the lion's actions. Obviously, he couldn't get answers from the tourists, and he lost hope. At that moment, someone suddenly bumped into Frank. However, it wasn't just a simple collision, it was a violent impact. Frank didn't know what happened, but he couldn't stand, and then he lost his balance and fell to the ground. Then, before he could process what had just happened, the man who had hit him had picked him up. Frank touched his shoulder, and fortunately, he didn't seem to dislocate it. Then he felt something slip from his hand, and the other man was doing the same. When they both stood up again, 
The unknown but polite man apologized to Frank and nodded to him, then quickly left. The police officers who had been surrounding Frank for that hour or so were still talking to some of the visitors, so they had no idea what was going on, which gave Frank a chance to sneak a peek at what he was holding. It was a small piece of paper that had been folded a few times. Frank looked around once more before noticing that the man who had just bumped into him had disappeared. Since the men weren't looking at him, he opened the note with confidence. The brief message on the note froze him. It read, meet me behind the fence in five minutes, and don't bring the police. The message was written in a hurry, but it was clearly expressed. However, Frank had no idea what the man wanted from him, he just wanted with all his heart to get information about Zara's location, so he was willing to risk everything. Afterwards, Frank walked up to the police and told them that he had to make some private calls. The policeman reluctantly agreed. Frank pinned his hopes on the note and then curiously walked to the back of the stable, hoping that the mysterious man was already there waiting. Luckily, he saw the man, so Frank ran toward him. Frank did not want to make a scene, but he was very anxious to know the answer. However, the man signaled that he needed to stay calm and quiet. Behind the stables, Frank realized that no one could see him, and he was eager to ask the man who wrote the note what had happened, and Frank wanted to know if the man had any information about the woman who had taken Zara. The man surprisingly told Frank that he did know about the woman. This was the man who had brought her to the zoo. Frank could hardly believe it and was shocked, and this was the clue he had been looking for. He could finally learn the motive of the young woman, and so many questions could be solved. Then, the men quickly shattered his expectations. The man had driven from the south, where he had met the woman. The woman had hitchhiked along the way. Since the man happened to be planning to come to the race, he allowed the woman to get in the car. During the morning drive, they barely spoke a word, and Frank, who had hoped for more information, admitted that while he was still a little disappointed, the man did give him some key information to find the woman. The man interrupted Frank and began to recount his experiences of the morning, particularly where he had met the young woman. The man did not want the police to get involved for three reasons. First, he didn't trust the police and he knew that hitchhiking in these areas was illegal. Second, he didn't want to become a suspect in the case, which would have caused him too much stress and trouble. The man had only been in the car once, and he had had previous encounters with the police. When Frank assured the man that he would not reveal his identity to the police, the man gave him his address, and Frank immediately went to the police so that he could pursue the lead when he rejoined them. He told them the address he had just learned, and one of the officers asked him how he had gotten this information. Fortunately, the officers accepted the source of the information. The place was about a half-hour drive from the city and in the direction the woman had left, which was a very good clue. In the rush, the officers didn't bother to verify what kind of place it was. When they arrived, Frank and the officers had to check twice to see if a mistake had been made. After that, Frank still thought it couldn't be the right spot. It looked like a beautiful farm, and Frank could see dozens of horses running across the fields. Frank thought the place looked like a paradise, but he wondered if the mysterious woman was really there and, more importantly, if she had brought the lion there. Frank and the officers stepped out of the car and knew they had nothing to say. Whoever owned the place, it was hard for them to argue because the most important thing they had to do was to find the missing lion, Zara. At that time, no one came out of the house to greet them. As they slowly approached, things became much easier. A group of people in their twenties were moving around in the backyard. From what they were wearing, you could tell they appeared to be animal janitors. After that, Frank actually spotted the woman he was hoping to see, and the woman saw them too. The woman was as surprised by all this as Frank was. Although the woman may have been taken aback, she obviously realized there was no way to escape, which is why she didn't move. At that moment, the woman could only watch as they rapidly approached her and her companions. As they immediately asked the woman questions, an older man and woman came running out of the main building of the farm, not looking as friendly as the woman. They began to shout, as if to ask what they had done to the woman. After a while, 
they finally calmed down, while the others really understood. One of the police officers offered to sit down at a nearby picnic table. When they discussed it for a while, they realized what had happened. The farm seemed to be not just any animal ranch but some kind of lion rescue center. The elderly couple, along with their children, cared for the animals to ensure they had a comfortable life. In some cases, those lions would be sold to new owners. Frank didn't realize that Zara had been living on that farm for many years. The lion's mother became pregnant and gave birth to it. Zara was a healthy lion, but by then it had been sold. The elderly couple admitted that perhaps they should have known Zara's new owners better. They had sold Zara to a man who lived on the other side of town. The man apparently made up a lie and said the lion was born into a good family and was worth a lot of money. Frank was the third owner of that lion. After Frank fell for it, he bought the lion for a high price. The couple's youngest daughter, Julia, spent a lot of time with the lion during the first few years, which led her to immediately recognize it at the zoo game that day. Although they both grew up, Zara recognized Julia as well, and Julia admitted that she made a foolish decision and took Zara away. The lion approached her and was willing to leave the zoo with her, and Julia admitted that she wanted the lion to return to the farm, even though she didn't think about the consequences. Everyone was touched by the story, especially Julia's parents. They didn't even know Zara was in their stable. This woman's behavior was a secret to them. The couple and this woman looked at each other and were happy that the lion had returned. What do you think about this story, please let us know in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.